a busy guy, travels around the world as well as being part of a great church up in Hull, a revived church led there by uh, Jared Cooper. And he's got his own ministry, Generation Builders, he's, he's an author. And if you haven't yet got hold of any of his books that he's got left there, can I s seriously recommend them to you? I've got The Sound of Heaven now to have a read of, but the one that I'd read before that, last time he came, he just got the one book, uh, um, Seeing the Church, and it is an absolutely fantastic book about the church and seeing the church as, as God sees the church and who we call to be as the people of God. And uh, there's the others there. I know we sold out of the Miracle Table, but I think they can probably go online on, on Amazon and get hold of that as well. So just type that in and you'll be able to get hold of that. But we're really looking forward to uh, having Andrew come and minister to us again this evening. So uh, without further ado, let's give him a really big welcome as he comes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Everyone doing well? Great. Was anyone not here this morning? Oh, a few of you. Well, great to see you all. Um, we're ready for a fantastic night tonight, aren't we, in God's presence? Um, yeah, just, uh, I've already, he's already plugged the book, so I don't need to do that. But uh, we do have a few copies left of, of The Sound of Heaven. This is a new book, so I brought a few extra copies of that. Uh, there are copies over there. Just a couple left of seeing the church. Uh, but you can get the miracle table on, um, on Amazon as well. Does anyone want this as a freebie? Okay, I have touched it, so you might need to <laughs> stick in the microwave or something afterwards. I think your hand was up first. There you go. Awesome. Well, um, tonight, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's just to clear my throat cough. Don't worry. <laughs> <coughs> uh, is it hot in here? Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> I shouldn't joke, should I? <laughs> um, God's good, isn't he? Um, so tonight, I just want to just um, not kind of really um, kind of planned a, a structured message. I just want to uh, just share with you a few scriptures that God's put on my heart, a few testimonies, and uh, just uh, well, then we're going to pray together and believe that God's going to do some incredible things. Is that okay? Um, so let me just, just pray straight up. And Father, we just want to just ask that tonight your spirit would just come and invade this place. God, we just want to pray that God, your presence, Lord God, will minister to every body, every soul, every mind, every spirit. And the name of Jesus will be lifted high. Amen. Um, I, I don't want to um, bang on about coronavirus. I think we've all heard enough, haven't we? And I'm sure we'll hear some more um, of the, the coming weeks and months. But um, just one, one of my favorite um, healing uh, revivalists, a guy called John G. Lake. Uh, John G. Lake um, was a missionary from America to South Africa, uh, probably, I don't know, about 100 years ago, maybe a little bit less. And um, there are a couple of incredible stories from his ministry. Um, when he was in South Africa, there were a couple of uh, really serious plagues that broke out and people were just dying all the time. It was just a horrendous situation. And uh, just a, a couple of really incredible stories just to kind of build your faith. Uh, there's one story where he goes into um, a hospital, and I don't recommend that you do this, but it just goes to show uh, just the faith and, and also the, the power of God that, that dwells within us as believers. And, and, and the kind of the, the researchers in the laboratories were, were, were testing uh, kind of the, the plague, uh, the, the bacteria under the microscope to try and get some kind of vaccine uh, and he went in and he said put some on my hand um, and he said put it under the microscope and they watched in amazement as as soon as the bacteria touched his skin it died and disappeared um, so let's believe that for us again I'm not saying you walk into your local NHS and do that but uh, but let's believe that wh whoever we come into contact with as a people of God uh, we, we have the power of Christ within us amen uh, and there's another incredible story and, and this just shows the power of prayer who knows that there's, there's a realm that we can see but there's also an unseen realm as well um, and sometimes God uh, gives us a glimpse into that realm you remember when it was Elisha when uh, God he prayed, God opened the eyes of my servant. He saw all the angels around uh, when he was besieged by the enemy. Well, uh, w uh, there's a story in John G. Lake's life. Him and his friend uh, went to a town uh, where w w the, they were, you know, the plague was just killing many, many people. And they went up on a little hill um, overlooking the town. 
and um, just decided to pray that God would, would bring healing um, to the town down below. And as they did that, uh, God opened up their eyes into the spirit realm and they, and they saw demons kind of walking up and down um, the, the, the streets of this town. And they just began to pray in the name of Jesus and rebuke all these evil spirits. And they watched as they prayed, one by one, these kind of evil spirits left this town. And the next morning, they went down into the town and every person that was sick had been healed. It's an incredible story, isn't it? Um, so again, just shows us the, the, the power of prayer and the authority that we have um, in the name of Jesus. Um, we, we looked this morning about seeing Jesus, beholding Jesus. And I, I just want to share with you a little bit just about the presence of God tonight. And, uh, and what, what does it mean to, to really look at Jesus and focus on him? And I just want to just start just by reading you this um, this story from uh, Luke's Gospel. I'm reading this out of a, this is a new translation of the Bible. I don't know if anyone's got the Passion Translation yet. Uh, There's um, just some w- uh, wonderful phrasing in this, uh, in this translation. This is Luke 10. Um, and so just, just listen to, the, to this just as I read it out of this translation. But it says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their journey, they came to a village where a woman welcomed Jesus into her home. Her name was Martha, and she had a sister named Mary. Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. But Martha became exasperated by finishing the numerous household chores in preparation for her guests. So she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. The Lord answered her, Martha... My beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled, pulled away by all these many distractions? Are they really that important? Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted, and I won't take this privilege from her. I love that, um, that phrase, that word there, undistracted. And I think when you, when you want an example of someone in the scriptures who beheld Jesus, I think there's no better example there of Mary, who was just sat at the feet of Jesus, it says, totally undistracted, giving him all of her attention, all of her focus was on him, and she was absorbing every revelation as he spoke. You know, I think we're living it in days when we need to value time at the feet of Jesus. And of course, you know, Martha was busy, you know, stocking up on the extra loo roll and all the other stuff that needed to be done with Jesus coming to town. And and I always feel a little bit bad for Martha because it says that, uh, that it was stuff that that had to be done. It was, she wasn't kind of wasting time on, you know, social media or whatever. She was doing stuff that had to be done. It was all legitimate. The problem was that in doing all that, she'd taken her eyes off of him. And what was the result? She was stressed. She was grumpy. She was irritated. Uh, she'd lost her peace. It's so easy isn't it, to get distracted. It's so easy to get pulled aside. Whatever that may be, whether that be work, whether it be hobbies, whether it be stuff that we're seeing on the news, it's so easy, either in our minds or our bodies, to, to get pulled away, to get distracted. Uh, but there's Mary just absorbing every revelation that comes from Jesus, focusing on him, gazing upon him, spending that time in his presence. Uh, And what was the result? Perfect peace. Who knows that is always the fruit of his presence. There's something valuable about just sitting at his feet and spending that time positioning ourselves where he can speak. And, and I, I want to encourage you, if you do find yourself with a little bit of time on your hands over the next few weeks, what an opportunity um, to just sit at the feet of Jesus and, and speak. You know, our, our church, um, a few months ago, it was during Sunday morning worship, and um, uh, th- there was a, a young girl in the, in the congregation, and um, as I was kind of uh, drawn to her during the worship, I saw a word written over her head. And it was the word success. Um, so when I, when I got up to preach, I just said, I just see the word success written over your, your head. And I believe it's to do with your education. 
Uh, and I, I just prayed into that, and, and that was it. And um, a, a few months later, um, I got a message um, on Facebook from a mum. She said, uh, you don't know my daughter, but she suffers from really bad dyslexia and a lot of other kind of learning problems as well. And she's always kind of struggling um, with a schoolwork, but you've just seen this word written over her head, success. And said, last night I went to the parents' evening at the school, and all the subjects she, she was struggling in, she's now excelling in. Isn't that awesome how when God speaks, he changes identities, he changes circumstances. And God can speak to every one of us, whether that be someone through someone else, whether it be through the scriptures, whether it be the voice of the Holy Spirit. But we've got to take that time to be in his presence, to be undistracted, to just gaze upon him and, and to behold him. Uh, and tonight's just again, uh, just another opportunity uh, just to spend time in the presence of God. Uh, one of my favorite, um, uh, favorite Psalms, Psalm 97, talks a little bit about the presence of God. And it says this, um, it says, well, it begins, uh, it begins by saying, uh, and I'm not going to talk about this bit, but it's worth repeating it. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Uh, and it goes on in verse 3. It says, fire goes before him, consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. And um, I, I, I guess that there will be some people here tonight, and you're here because you have got some mountains in your life that you need God to deal with. It might be a mountain of sickness. It might be, uh, it might be some other mountain. But you've got a, a thing right now in your life that you cannot move in your own strength. But in the presence of God, God can do incredible things. Because fire goes before him, consumes his foes on every side. So you've got, you've got 360 degree protection. On every side, no matter what angle the enemy comes at you, from every side, God's fire comes. And the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Let me just say something just for a moment, just regarding healing. Who knows that God is a God who can speak to a mountain and remove it? Amen? And I love those suddenly moments in the presence of God. But this, this verse comes at it slightly different. It says the mountains melt like wax. Now, who knows, when you light a candle, it will melt, but it's a gradual thing, right? And so when it comes to healing, it's important for us to understand there are some times when God heals instantly. The mountain's just gone. But then there's sometimes you just got to keep that mountain in his presence and keep bringing it into his presence and in faith, believe that every time you're in his presence, that mountain's just melting a little bit more. Because sometimes this is what happens. We come to a meeting like this. We receive prayer, uh, and we don't feel any difference. So we think, oh, nothing happened. Well, I don't know what your theology is like, but I refuse to believe that I can come into the presence of the living God with all power, with all authority, and nothing happen. I just believe something always happens in the presence of God. But sometimes it's just a little bit of melting. And so I've got to keep coming back into his presence and believe that every time I come, God is doing a little bit more. So I believe in tonight for some suddenlies, amen? But if you don't get your suddenly tonight, don't be discouraged. Just come into his presence anyway and keep coming into his presence and keep coming into his presence. Because every time we do, his fire is going to burn away a little bit more of that mountain until we come into the fullness of all that God's got for us, amen? I love the presence of God. Anyone else? Um, another psalm uh, puts it, uh, says this, As the deer thirsts or pants or streams of water, so my soul longs after you, O God. Um, and I, I used to read that, that psalm and think, oh, that's kind of a nice psalm, you know, kind of picture like a little deer 
the deers trot? What's, what did deers do? Kind of, uh, you know, trotting down to the water, nice sunny day, kind of birds singing and, and just having a little bit of a drink from the water. And then I studied it a little bit more. And what I, I, what I found was this, that in nature, when a deer is being pursued by another animal that's a predator, the predator will pursue the deer by its scent. And one of the ways that a deer can shake off a predator is it can get to water and it immerses itself in the water. And when it's come out, it's temporarily lost its scent and it's free without the, 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 uh, the other animal uh, pursuing it. And so for a deer to get to water, it's, it's not a case of, oh, I'm just a little bit thirsty, I'd like, a, I'd like a drink. It can actually be a matter of life or death. So what the psalmist is saying there is saying, God, I cannot live without your presence. And I think that we need to get to that place in, in our lives when his presence is, is more valuable than anything else. That we cannot live without his presence. And it's not just an add-on. It's not just an extra. You know, some people say, oh, you know, I go to church for just a little top-up at the end of the week. Friends, it has to be more than that. It has to be our life. It has to be our breath. It has to be our, our daily bread. The presence of God has to be everything to us. Amen? Just to share with you a little bit of uh, uh, my testimony. I... Um, I was kind of brought up in church, gave my life to Jesus really young and kind of always loved God and served God and always had a real hunger uh, to pursue the presence of God. Um, I, I went to a, a Christian school and I remember one day, it was I think 1994, that kind of uh, time period. So I, I would have been about, uh, about 11, 12, 13 years of age and uh, we had just morning prayers uh, as we did every morning. Uh, but on that, that day in the classroom, just something supernatural took place. Uh, the teacher just opened up in prayer as they did every day. And the presence of God came into that classroom. And, um, and then it spilled out into all the other classrooms. And it ended up, s s lessons were cancelled the whole day. As students were just laid on the carpet, just overwhelmed by the presence of God. And so I knew from, from kind of that age that the presence of God was not just a theological kind of term that we use in church, but it's real. You can experience him. You can feel him. He can, he can break in in such powerful ways. And, uh, you know, I started out in ministry uh, pretty young, straight after uh, leaving college, 18 years of age. I became a, a youth pastor at a church in South Yorkshire. And um, it was a great church, a church that loved God, loved the Bible, believed the Bible, believed in healings, believed in miracles. Only problem was we didn't really see that much of it. Um, so, you know, we, we'd often pray for people, but I can't really remember anyone getting healed. Uh, we often prayed for God to pour out his spirit, but I can't really remember anything like that ever happening. Um, but God just kept burning within me this hunger. God, I want to experience you. I, I really want to experience the power and presence of God. Who knows, there's got to be more than what we've experienced so far. And um, uh, I, I won't tell you that, that kind of the, my whole life story. I'll, I'll, you know, we, we, I don't want to be here too long tonight. But um, it, it led me to a place in December 2006. Um, I was in an evening service. Uh, a little bit similar to this, and there was a, an evangelist preaching um, who had had a real powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit. One day he'd just been at home in his living room and just worshipping, and, and God had just got a hold of him. And now he was traveling around the world, seeing miracles, people being healed, and God just doing incredible things for his life. And, and as, he, as he was preaching, I was just sat in my seat, and, and I thought, God, I would love an encounter with the Holy Spirit like he's had. And I went up for prayer at the end, and as he came to me, he said, you're about to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit like I've had. God's clever, isn't he? It's like, sometimes he knows, it's like he knows what you're thinking. Um, um, but, you know, you might expect me to say that right there and then, the power of God touched me, but that wasn't the case. Actually, I didn't really feel anything. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to put your faith 
in God's word and what God said. Uh, and and I, I just put my faith in that word. I believed it was a word from God. So I said, okay, nothing, I don't feel any different tonight. But if that's a word of God, I'm going to claim it. Uh, but then you've got to do something about it. You know, every prophetic word, it demands a response. And so, you know, I said, right, I'm just going to have a week's holiday, but not a holiday. I, I'm going to have a week seeking God. And so I booked a little kind of cottage somewhere and went off in the middle of nowhere by myself. No mobile phone, no internet. Um, just decided just to seek God. I just got a Bible and, uh, you know, um, it, it wasn't podcasts. It was kind of CDs back in all those years ago in 2007. Um, and I was just, just crying out, God, I, I don't want to leave this place until I've had an encounter with your presence. And day one, day two, day three, and on the fourth night, um, I was just there in this little place on my own listening to some Michael W. Smith worship. Come on. The Red Worship album. You know the one. And suddenly the glory of God came into that room. You might think, well, what do you mean by the glory of God? Well, the glory of God, it means the weight of his presence. And it was so weighty that I literally couldn't stand. And I fell face down on the carpet. And for about four hours, it was like electricity flowing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I could just feel wave after wave after wave of God's presence filling me. And uh, some of you might think this is a bit weird, but at one point I tried to stand up and I felt a hand on my back holding me to the floor. And after about four hours, it just lifted. And um, I thought, wow, well, that was interesting. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, then you kind of brush your teeth and go to bed and life carries on as normal. Uh, although it didn't. From that day on, my life has never been the same since. I felt an intimacy with God, uh, the joy, the freedom, the peace that comes from the Holy Spirit. I felt a, a, a a closeness in prayer, hearing the voice of God. Um, and it all came out of that, that encounter with God. And I, I went back to, to my church where nothing really ever that much happened. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I was preaching on Sunday morning. I preached, uh, I just shared that testimony, just like I've shared with you. And I just said, I believe I've had an encounter with God. Um, if you want one, why don't you come out to the front? And we never really did kind of response times or anything like that but nearly the whole church came out to the front and I thought well I don't know what to do now because we've never, I, you know so I just copied what I'd seen you know people do on the telly um, so I just went to the first person and I just prayed God as you've touched me God would you touch them and I don't know who was more shocked me or them but suddenly the power of God touched this woman and just overwhelmed by the presence of God and uh, just one by one, God was touching people. There was a lady there with um, osteoarthritis, and the power of God touched her, and, uh, and she was just miraculously healed. And um, that's just a start of, of, you know, God just, uh, you know, by his grace, just seeing what God do wonderful things. But, uh, you know, I, I'm hungry for more. I want to go deeper into God's presence. And, and no matter what your level you're at tonight, maybe, maybe you're here and maybe some of you have had similar experiences where the, the power and the glory of God's filled your life or, or maybe you've never experienced anything like that before. Whatever level we're at tonight, we're going to touch on this in a moment, we can go deeper tonight into the presence of God. Um, I've got a, just a couple more scriptures I want to uh, share with us tonight. Um, Psalm 46. Um, I love this, this psalm. And, um, it's funny. Um, I, was, I was preaching on this psalm in January. And um, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, because it, it, it talks, you, well, let me read it. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. 
He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks a bow and shatters a spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Um, it's an incredible, you know, when you read it in the context of everything that's going on. Oh, Siri's talking to me. I'm preaching, I'm preaching your series. Hey, Siri. Okay, there we go. Um, it's a psalm, isn't it? It talks about nations being in uproar, chaos, all kinds of, you know, kingdoms, you know, being shaken. And I, I, I was preaching that in January. Because um, uh, January, remember when we were going to have World War Three in January? Can you remember that far back when, when President Trump assassinated that guy and everyone thought it was going to be World War Three, and, and then we got Brexit? Do you miss worrying about Brexit? Isn't it incredible how, you know, you think everything's crazy and then, then you want to go back, don't you? It's like, you know, um, you know, I'd do anything, you know, just, can President Trump just assassinate someone else, give us something else to worry about? But, but in the midst of all that, be still, know that I am God. Um, and, and, and all this, the nation's been in uproar, incredible things happening, but then right in the middle of it, it says this, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. And it's, it's almost like a, a bizarre thing because it's talking about nations being in uproar, kingdoms falling, wars raging, everything being chaos. And you think, right, what's the answer to this? There is a river. And you think, what, what are you talking about? Because what is the river? Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. By this, he meant the Spirit, who had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The river is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And God is showing us in this psalm, the answer to worry is his presence. The answer to fear is his presence. The answer to all the problems in the world is his presence. Yes, we're praying for, you know, a vaccine and the end to this disease. But, you know, when it does end, which it will, there'll be something else that everyone's worrying about. But the answer is always this, his presence. Right there, there is a river that make glad the city of God, the place where God dwells. And, and of course, in that context, the city of God is Jerusalem. But today, the city of God is me and you. So the river dwells in me and you. And it says that this river makes us glad. This river brings us joy. This river brings us peace. This river makes us whole. And tonight, we just want to get into the presence of the Holy Spirit. Get into the river and allow God to do something. And you know, Ty, I could tell you so many stories of people that I've seen just encounter the river of the Holy Spirit. I've got a, a friend in Rotherham called Colleen and uh, about uh, probably eight years ago now, Colleen just, uh, she's just kind of an ordinary kind of housewife from South Yorkshire. And one day she went to the swimming baths and um, had an accident in the swimming pool and broke a couple of bones in her back. And it went, it was misdiagnosed. It was never treated. And it was a start of, of about five years of absolute, just ruined her life. She was left totally lame in one leg. Um, she was partially lame in the other leg. <clears throat> she was, um, she had kind of um, internal injuries that left her doubly incontinent. Uh, she developed a serious form of diabetes. 
She had to get a harness to get in and out of bed. She had to get a mobility scooter. Her husband, they actually, her and her husband pastored a little church and they had to give up the church. He became a full-time carer. Just a, a real terrible situation. And she came to a, a Sunday night meeting that I was, I was doing at her church in Rotherham. And she'd been prayed for a number of times, but afterwards she told me that she really had faith that that, that night God was going to do something. And uh, she, she came to the front and um, we just prayed that the Holy Spirit would just minister to people. And uh, as, we, as we came to, uh, came to Kalim, we just prayed, God, just let your presence touch her. I had no idea what was wrong with her, but she was just overwhelmed by the presence of God and, uh, and just lay on the carpet for a few minutes, just allowing the river of the Holy Spirit to wash over her. And um, after about 10 minutes, she got up and she was totally healed. Um, the, the bones in her back were healed. She got full use of her legs. All the internal injuries were, were healed. The diabetes went. Uh, she went to the doctor. The doctor had tears in her eyes saying, we can, I can only put this down as a miracle from God. Uh, a little granddaughter who was about four years old had been born um, after the accident, so she'd never been able to pick her granddaughter up. But in the living room, she went home, picked her granddaughter up, spun her around the living room, both of them in, in floods of tears. That's a presence of God. That's a presence of Jesus. Um, I was in a church just last month, um, uh, just a, a real, a kind of an unusual one, really. It was a, it was a Saturday night meeting, and uh, w- you know we prayed for people and preached and everything. Everyone went home, apart from the pastor, and then he, he was kind of waiting to lock up. And then there were three kind of women sat on the front row, and uh, two of them came over and said, "Can you pray with our friend?" And um, I said, "Yeah, okay." Uh, and I found out later that this woman was a worship leader in that church. Uh, but she had had really six months of absolute hell. Um, she'd been in, in church one day, six months prior to this. And really the enemy had, had, had come upon her in a really oppressive way. And for six months she'd been unable to say the name of Jesus. For six months she'd been unable to sing in worship. She'd been unable to pray. She'd been unable to read a Bible. I mean, can you imagine that as someone who loves worship, loves God? Just her entire spiritual life was shut down by this demonic attack, really. Um, You know, she was totally fine outside of the presence of God. But whenever she came into the presence of God and tried to worship, her entire body was in agony. And um, so I I was like, well, I don't know what to really do here or or say here. Um, and so I just, I just prayed and just asked God, God, show me. And God showed me that she was like in a, a fiery trial, you know, like the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fires. And, and she, was, she was being devoured by the fires of the enemy. And I just thought, well, the answer to fire is rain. So I said, let's just pray, me and these two other ladies, our friends. I said, let's just pray for the rain of the Holy Spirit to douse the fires of, of the enemy. And you know what? There was no shouting or screaming. It was the most undramatic thing you can imagine. But as we prayed for rain, just the Holy Spirit just rested on this woman. And after a few moments, she looked up, just something had been lifted off of her. That was a Saturday night. The Sunday morning, she was back leading worship in the church, full of joy, prophesying, dancing, singing. That's the presence of God. And the presence of God is here tonight. The river of God is here tonight to touch every life. Um, let me just read to you one more scripture. Um, this is Ezekiel 47. Well-known passage where if you, anyone who ever preaches about the river of God, they're always going to quote this one, aren't they? Uh, I, I won't read the, the, whole, the whole thing, but um, verse 3, it says, As a man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, He measured off a thousand cubits, and then he led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits, and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand, and led me through water that was up to his waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross, because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, that for every one of us tonight, there are deeper levels. 
And Ezekiel here, a man takes him by the hand and leads him deeper and deeper into the river. And it's a beautiful picture of what Jesus wants to come and do tonight. He wants to, aren't you glad Jesus doesn't shove us in tonight? He didn't kind of dunk your head under and leave you there. No, it's, it's an invitation. He won't force you to go deeper. Remember, it said, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, there's an if there. So the implication must be that there are some people that aren't thirsty. But I guess because you're here tonight, you're here because you want to be here. Because you want to go deeper. And maybe some tonight just want to dip their toes in a little bit into the things of the Holy Spirit. Some people just want to dive straight in. Uh, but whatever level we're at tonight, God can satisfy that thirst. Satisfy that hunger. Satisfy that desire. I'll tell you the level I want to, want to get to. Uh, who's heard of uh, Smith Wigglesworth? Great healing evangelist, a Yorkshireman, come on. Um, and... Um, uh, you know, one of my, you know, you've, I'm sure you've heard the stories of him healing the sick, raising the dead. Um, you know, he, I remember reading one story of him walking on a train and the person opposite him saying, the moment you got on this train, I got convicted of my sin. What can I do to be saved? I mean, just an incredible presence of God that he carried. But one of my favorite stories is um, it, it was rumored that, that when it was a prayer meeting. If Wigglesworth was there and he stood up to pray, the presence of God would be so thick when he prayed audibly that people literally couldn't stand up. Uh, that was how powerful it was. And, and there was one pastor who heard about this and he said, oh, I, I don't believe that. I think that's just an exaggeration. Well, God put him to the test because a short time later, he was in a prayer meeting where Smith Wigglesworth was. And, and as, as Wigglesworth stood up to pray, sure enough, the presence of God was so thick and heavy uh, that people just either began to sit down or kneel down or fall down or lie down. And this pastor had said, oh, I don't believe in any of that. He'd ended up crawling out of the room on his hands and knees. Um, but what I love is this. They asked him afterwards, the pastor, what happened? And he, this, this is what he said. When, when Wigglesworth prayed, he said, there was too much of God in the room. And I, 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 when, when I heard that a few years ago, I held on to that phrase. And I thought, God, I want too much of you. You know, wouldn't it be awesome if, if we, you know, we left tonight and people were like, oh, was God there tonight? And we were like, there was too much of God. Oh, you know, oh, you know oh, do you, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm too filled with the Holy Spirit. That sounds like overflow to me. Anyone else? That's where we want to get to. Where there's just too much of God's presence. Our cup literally is running over. And um, the, 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 this passage ends like this. He led me to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes down into the Araba, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. That incredible that the river has a power to transform environments. Um, swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and it makes the salt water fresh. Listen to this. So where the river flows, everything will live. Isn't that an awesome phrase? Can we say that out loud together tonight? Where the river flows, everything will live. Physically. You being healed tonight. Your finances being alive. Your marriage being alive. Your kids being alive. Your relationship with God being alive. Wherever the river flows, whatever the river comes into contact with, there's life. So if there's any area of your life tonight where you're a little bit dead or dry, bring it into the river. Say, God, tonight my prayer life's a little bit dead. I'd bring it into the river. God, tonight my... Actually, there's a relationship tonight. It may be with my spouse. It may be with one of my kids, but it may be with a, a work colleague. But God, it's a little bit dead right now. I bring it into the river. Sometimes we're kind of there with, you know, trying to resuscitate the thing, trying to punch it and, you know, give mouth to mouth. And it's like only God can bring resurrection. 
sometimes you just got to bring it into it into the river because whatever the river comes into contact with life is there uh, fishermen will stand along the shore fish will be of many kinds um, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river the leaves will not wither nor will their fruit fail every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing that's a promise tonight isn't it that there's healing in the river there's miracles in the river and all I want to do tonight is just pray that the river of the Holy Spirit will minister to you. Um, so I don't need to ask what you need prayer for tonight. We're just, sometimes we do that, but sometimes we just release the river of God. Knowing that wherever the river flows, there's life, there's healing. And who knows, healing is, is not always physical. Healing can be many ways. I'll just close with this one story. I've got um, a... a, a well, now a friend um, uh, called Hannah. And I met Hannah a couple of years ago in Chesterfield. And I was doing a healing service like this. And, and on that occasion, I said, I'm going to ask you what you want prayer for. And then I'm going to, you know, pray for it. And this gave Hannah a bit of a dilemma because she had two things really where she needed healing. Um, Hannah had for about three, four years had uh, anxiety that had just totally taken over her life. Um, she couldn't eat, she couldn't sleep, she couldn't work. Uh, she was becoming depressed and suicidal. Um, it had really just destroyed her whole life, this terrible anxiety. The other problem was that um, about a year before, Hannah had given birth and it had left her with a terrible pain in her pelvis, which meant she couldn't walk properly without being in pain. Um, so here she was and, and poor Hannah only thought you could only ask for one thing. So she thought, do I ask for healing of the anxiety or, or for my body? And uh, she was kind of getting more, uh, you know, anxious as I was kind of getting down the line, which for someone with crippling anxiety is not great, is it? Um, but I kind of came to her and said, you know, what do you want prayer for? And, and she finally, she told me afterwards, she thought, she kind of said to God, God, I can just about cope with this pain in my body. But this anxiety, I can't live with it anymore. So when I said, what do you want prayer for? She said, I suffer from anxiety. And so we just prayed in the name of Jesus that God had ministered to her. And, and then we went to the next person. And a year later, she emailed me. And she said, I've left it a year because I wanted to make sure it really worked. Uh, but she said, from that prayer, all that anxiety was just lifted off of me totally. And I've been at total peace and at total rest. Uh, but said what was amazing was this. It wasn't until I got home uh, from the meeting, I realized that the pain in my pelvis had been healed as well. Not only did she get what she asked for, but what she didn't ask for as well. That's how good God is, isn't it? And so why don't you, why don't you stand with me tonight? And I, I want to pray for two things tonight. Um, I want to pray firstly for anyone who needs any form of healing. Do you want to come up? and um, Any form of healing, whether that be physical, whether that be, uh, you know, mental, emotional, spiritual, or, or there's just any area of your life right now where you need the river of God to bring that life. And secondly, I, I want to pray for anyone who's just thirsty, hungry for a deeper encounter with God. And you might fit into both categories, that's fine. It's going to be the same prayer. We're just going to release the river of God. Um, now, he, here's what we're going to do. Why don't you just, just close your eyes right now? Now, when Jesus prayed for people, he prayed several different ways. There were times when he laid hands on people. And the power of God flowed through the laying on of hands. But there were also times when he didn't touch anyone. He just spoke the word. And so tonight, being sensitive of kind of the, the time that we're living in, I'm going to pray both ways. So I have no problem tonight with laying hands on anyone that would want to lay on of hands. But if you're a little bit uncomfortable with that, then that's fine. I'll just pray over the microphone for you. 
He did other things as well, like spitting people's faces, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that one until, until next time. When. <laughs> so let, let's start. If, if there's anyone here tonight and you are in need of healing in any way, um, why don't you raise your hands to heaven right now and we're going to start I'm just going to pray over the microphone right now God I want to pray in the name of Jesus for the power of God to flow firstly into people's bodies right now if you're able to place your hand where you need healing can you do that right now if, if you're not then, uh, then just keep your hand just raised but I want to pray right now the power of God to flow into people's bodies right now. I want to pray the fire of God just to burn away all pain, all disease, every symptom, Lord God, everything right now where people need healing. God, would that healing flow into people's bodies. I want to pray those that need healing of their minds right now. God, we want to rebuke stress, depression, anxiety. We want to pray just let the peace of God flood people's minds right now. God, those that are maybe struggling with addictive behavior or, 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 or maybe with trauma or shame from the past. God, would you break those chains right now in the name of Jesus. I want to pray healing into relationships right now. I just feel that right now that there are people here, you need healing in a relationship issue. I want to pray right now the river of God to flow right now into, into that area, into that situation right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray any area of people's lives right now that it, that's dead. God, whether it be finances, whether it be ministry, whether it be people's relationship with you, let the river of God flow right now, believing that God, where the river flows, everything lives. Everything lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just take a moment right now and just receive the presence of God. Receive the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you're here tonight and you, you, you just are thirsty to go deeper into the presence of God, why don't you just raise both of your hands right now? God, I just want to pray like a flood. You would wash over your people tonight. God, we're here for just a, an encounter, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit tonight. God, we, 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 when we talk about um, uh, baptism, Lord God, as, as Pentecostal Christians, we're not talking about a sprinkling. We're talking about full immersion. And God, we want to be fully immersed in the river of God tonight. Fully immersed in the river of the Holy Spirit. God, I want to pray power right now coming upon people in the name of Jesus. Power, 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 power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, this young lady right in front of me right now. There is a power coming upon you right now. There is a power coming upon you. There's been times when you felt, uh, you felt your own weakness. But now the Lord says that in your weakness, I am made strong. And right now there is an anointing coming upon your life that's going to break yokes. Right now I just want to pray from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. 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 If you're here tonight and you have never before uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the, with the gift of speaking in tongues, you, you can receive that right now. Just where you are, just all over this place, pray this prayer out loud with me. Jesus, come on, pray out loud with me. Jesus, fill me tonight with the Holy Spirit. I pray for the gift of speaking in tongues and the power to serve you. Holy Spirit, I receive you. Now all of this place, let's just open our mouths and just begin to pray in tongues right now. If you've never done it before, just in faith right now, just pray out right now that supernatural language that's going to help you in your prayer life. Ora mashimono vodo koramana ishida ya da 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 ora mana vodo koramana zimono vodo no ora masimono vodo koramana ora masivodo koramana yana ora masivodo koramana zivodo no 
nazivo do 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 yona sikara mana ishikaro mazivo do no yona ora mazivo do no izimonovo do no yona ora mazivo do no yona ishimana vo do no yona somebody with pain in the right shoulder god's healing you right now just put your hand there right now if that's you let the power of god just minister ora mazimono vo do no ra da 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 O shimana voda koramana o shivada karuma zivodana be filled with joy right now come on just let the, that water levels rise right now as you just praise jesus as you just stir up the gift of god o rashikaruma no vadayana isimono vodano just before we are, are we going live tonight is this on yeah just before we lay hands on people that are here just want to pray right now anyone who's watching this right now live we just want to pray that the power of god would just minister to you right now we want to pray that if there's anyone watching this that's sick in their bodies come on church let your faith rise right now we want to pray anyone that's sick in their bodies right now we want to pray that the power of god would minister to you right now in the name of Jesus we want to pray against pain we want to pray against sickness right now we want to pray against any symptoms that may be causing people concern right now god let them go right now in the name of Jesus god we want to pray that the the negative diagn- god we want to pray positive where people have attested positive for things we pray uh, uh, reverse it lord god in the name of Jesus we want to pray anyone watching right now who's never been filled with the holy spirit before we want to pray the presence of god would just flood right now your living room your bedroom wherever you're watching this right now we just want to pray just be filled to overflowing with the presence of god God just like you visited me Lord God in 2007 I pray for for encounters right now uh, over people watching in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah those that have just come in from from upstairs right now we're just praying for the presence of God just to touch people right now just you can just join us right now just close your eyes and just think of Jesus right now I want to pray the presence of God just minister right now to every person in this place in Jesus name in Jesus name what we're going to do the final few minutes tonight is we're just going to sing a, a couple of songs of worship and we're just going to allow as we worship the presence of God just to keep washing over us tonight bringing healing bringing freedom bringing power and peace But if you're here tonight and you would like us to lay hands on you and pray that tonight there would just be an impartation of the power of God then I want to invite you just to come out here to the to the front or out here to the sides uh, again if if you uh, if that makes you feel uncomfortable you're under no pressure where you stood God can minister to you uh, but i believe that when the anointing of God is here uh, like this is nothing for us to fear and so if you if you want to come out we'll lay hands on you tonight we'll pray just that the river of God will touch you Um so if you want to stay where you are just worship but if you want to come out here just come out the space down here at the front and to the sides and I would just love to pray over you prophesy over you I'm not going to ask what you want specifically tonight um I'm just going to release the river of the holy spirit and just pray that the presence of God will minister right now hallelujah if we could just come fill out this area here just so we can make enough room as possible that would be great if you're out here if you could just come right up to to this wall that would just really help us just create as much space as possible hallelujah hallelujah what are we going to sing holy spirit that's a good one in it come on come on right right now whether you're out here at the front whether you stood or sat um maybe if you want to just if you don't want to be out here at the front but you want some time with God I encourage you just find a space somewhere else in the room and kneel down lie down just just spend these next 15 minutes or so just worshiping Jesus allowing the holy spirit to fill us right now hallelujah come on right now let's worship There's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare 
that have been prayed for already just keep just soaking in the presence of God those that are waiting to be prayed for don't just kind of wait like you're waiting at bus stop for something to happen just where you are just engage with the presence of God right now God's here he's touching people powerfully so let's just put all our attention all our focus on him hallelujah Hallelujah. Again, for those that have maybe never experienced anything like this, don't, don't worry. God's not going to shove you in at the deep end tonight. He might just want to get your toes in, dipped in a little bit. But whatever level you're at tonight, the presence of God is here to minister to us tonight. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Let our 
Come on, just where you're at right now, just let the presence of God just minister. I think we've laid hands on everyone that wants that. So right now, just let God just minister to you directly right now. Let him speak. Let him refresh you. Let him fill you. Hallelujah. 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 If, you, if you're wondering why some people are not stood up, it's we're not pushing anyone or anything like that. Just God is sometimes so powerful that sometimes people just literally cannot stand in his presence. That doesn't always happen. It just sometimes happen, happens. So don't, don't be nervous or scared by that. It's just one way in which some people respond to the presence of God. But whether you're on the floor, whether you stood up, whether you sat down, believe the presence of God is ministering to you right now. Just look at Jesus. Just behold him. Gaze upon him. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Oramana Roma Sinayana. Ishika Romano Yana Siva. Ishivada Romano Yana Sidaya. Oramana Roma Sikaramana Yana. We worship you, O God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. Holy, holy, holy. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Mm. Come on, let's just sing one more song. Let's just worship the Lord together tonight.
ความencourage you to keep taking that but try and get to see your doctor at some point if that's possible and let them verify it so let, let's be wise in all of this but we know that God is here and God's continuing to minister to people has anyone come with pain in a certain area of their body perhaps and, and that's gone tonight they can testify to that if that's you just just put your hand up if you're able to Vera just come and tell us Vera what Accident at um, New Year's Eve. I've had terrible, terrible pain in my shoulder. And praise my wonderful Saviour, He's taken all the pain away. And this morning, this morning, um, when when Andrew was praying, um, I've had terrible osteoarthritis in my back. And this morning, it went completely. I just thank my Lord and my Saviour for all what He's done for me, my Lord. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's, oh, come on, let's, let's applaud Jesus for that. Anybody else? I became a Christian in, in 1994 at a church in Birmingham. And then uh, shortly after that, it was the time when the Toronto outpouring, the Toronto blessing, uh, really came onto the onto the scene, certainly within Christendom, and uh, my pastors went over there, and they came back, and uh, we had meetings like this time and time again. Some of you will remember that, it may be in the churches that you were at, and uh, for me, just a, apart from just what, what Andrew shared with me, a word from God, for me, I just feel like God's just kind of rekindled something of that first love, you know, it says about the church in Ephesus that you've forsaken your first love, and you know, so often ministry can you just get so focused on the work of the Lord that you forget the Lord of the work, the one that you're doing it for. And just had a sense tonight that God's just bringing me back to a place where putting, gazing upon Jesus, looking at him, beholding upon, upon him. So easy at times to lose sight of things, isn't it? But uh, just that sense that tonight bringing me back and just seeing bodies on the floor. <laughs> It's taking me back to, to what it was and that restoring the joy of his salvation. Those early days, remembering how it was and just that sense of adventure that you and God are unstoppable. And that's amazing. And I think when I heard people laughing, you know, take this as, as how you want to, but I believe that God's vaccinating some people this evening. The Bible says laughter or a merry heart is like a medicine. Um, it's just giving them a holy vaccine this evening. Isn't God good? If you're a stranger and you were to walk in and look at this, <laughs> you think, what have we been doing in this place? <laughs> don't get me going John <laughs> you know some things are contagious aren't they in the spirit
Now, the Bible says in his presence, is it Psalm 16 and verse 9, it says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. And it might seem a little bit alien, maybe, for some people with lots of laughter going on. And for some people, laughter and church are two things that just don't go together, aren't they? They think church is a boring place, is their dull. But you know where... We heard this morning where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. <laughs> and in His presence, there is fullness of joy. Father, would you just release more of your joy in this place? Would you just release more of your joy in this place, Lord? give you, not that you need it, Lord, but we give you permission to keep on doing what you want to do in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And let me say that if you need to go,
if you need to go. If you need to go, please, please feel free to go. But if you want to stay, just stay. We'll leave the keys for you. If you want to stay, seriously, we don't want to rush away from here. We know Andrew has to travel back to, to Hull and he's got the little ones as well so we're going to let him be free to go if you wanted to get one of the books come and see him now is the time to come and do that